Welcome back to Don's Life. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining today. You may remember that I installed an aftermarket screen in my GMC Sierra AT4, really updating the infotainment system. Unfortunately, the GPS cable that it comes with isn't as good as the factory one, so I'm gonna show you how to tap into it today. And I'm also gonna show you how to install a couple brand new important updates. Let's go. To replace the antenna that it came with and tap into the one on the truck, we're going to need a couple accessories. First, you're going to need an extension cable. The one I have here is actually longer than I needed, but it was all that was available on Amazon in Canada. But I will link the appropriate ones for Canada and the US in my video description below. And then you will also need a splitter. If you do get a longer cable like I did, it's fine. It just means you have extra cable to tuck up out of the way. To assist us, I've actually laid out the cables so I can illustrate how we're gonna make these connections so it's less confusing. So pretend this is the original GPS antenna or the shark fin in the truck. It's actually a brown cable. So let's pretend this is brown. So there is a brown cable right now plugged into a module. We're going to uncouple that plug from the module. Again, this is brown. And we're going to plug it in to our splitter cable here. Then the splitter cable is going to have one end go back and plug into the module. And that's going to leave us with one end not used. But this isn't long enough to reach the back of the screen. So this is where it's going to plug into the extension. And then that extension is going to run to the screen. So I hope this helps with the layout. Now let me show you where the actual brown plug is in this vehicle. So on the driver's side, up here in the footwell, on the right-hand side, right behind these vents, there are some plugs. These plugs can be a little difficult to grab. And there is a red locking tab on the brown plug that you need to slide backwards. And then there's a tab at the back of it that you need to depress that will allow you to pull the whole brown plug out together. So when you have it released, it should look like this. Now I simply plug this into the brown plug and plug this into the module where the brown plug came out of. Now we have our splitter installed. Now we just install the extension. So this is gonna go there. And then this end will need to be fished up in behind the dashboard to the back of our screen. All right, the GPS tap is done. All that's left to do is pull it outside and see how many satellites we see. However, before I do that, like any new technology, there's bound to be some upgrades and some updates. Quick disclaimer, some of the following updates may take several days or weeks of testing. I will show you how to perform them and your experience may differ from mine. Now, if you have a Facebook account and you've looked at the AU Car Facebook page specific to these screens, they'll give you all the instructions and links to what I'm about to show you with these upgrades. The first update we're going to do is the system software update. This is the bigger one. I downloaded it directly to a USB drive on my computer and it took about three minutes. If you wanna do it from your vehicle, you can download it directly to the device. But if your Wi-Fi connection to the vehicle or if you're using a SIM card or a hotspot, it could take longer, maybe up to 10 minutes, maybe even longer than that. I chose to do it on a computer inside my home where I have very fast internet. This update should address five issues. The IMEI number display fixes an issue where the IMEI number was not displayed. CarPlay interface icons resolves problems with CarPlay and other interface icons being obstructed. CarPlay connection delay addresses delays experienced when connecting to CarPlay. Custom startup logo fixes issues where the custom startup logos were not displayed. And lastly, static wallpaper retention. Ensure static wallpapers are retained after a restart. The Canva software update is a smaller and quicker update. Again, you download the file to a USB drive. Do not put it into a folder. It's a very small file size. 
The links can be found on the Facebook support page. The Canva software update should address volume control issues where some users were unable to control the volume through the unit. The second thing it addresses is an air conditioning code in case you were having problems with that. Got my software update file right here. It's called update13.zip. I'm going to plug it into one of my USB cables. And it should automatically see the file and prompt on the screen for the update. There we go. System updater. We're about to hit upgrade. Well, let's go for it. Okay, now it's rebooting. We should be able to unplug our USB drive. Now let's see how fast it connects to CarPlay. It's doing it automatically. My phone here. Well, that was in pretty fast. Okay, let's try this again. I am going to put my phone into airplane mode, turn off everything. CarPlay should cease in a second here. Now it's going to look for it again. Let's turn it back on. And let's see how fast it is. Eh, not too bad. I'd say that's a little bit quicker. I'll do some more testing, but that seems to be okay. If it does that every time, I think that's adequate. Let's try and set one of these live wallpapers again, and hopefully it'll stay for the long term. We'll pick this one, set as wallpaper. Set wallpaper, home and lock screen. Said wallpaper set. And there's our home screen with our live wallpaper in behind. Now with this update, that should not disappear. And I had CarPlay off because I was on Wi-Fi for a second. So let's turn CarPlay back on and again, see how quickly it connects. Hit CarPlay, bring up our Z-Link CarPlay app. And I think it would connect pretty quickly based on what we saw before. There we go. Again, if it's that fast, I can live with that. Now let's do the CAN bus update. I've got the file on this USB drive here and just that file all by itself. It's a bin file. We'll just plug it into one of the USB ports here. I have to do all this one-handed, so it's a little awkward. Now this is not gonna automatically start. So for this one here, you're gonna go to your settings, system, upgrade, plug box, simple upgrade, and it should do its thing. You can see this CAN means CAN bus, so CAN bus update. Now we just wait, and that should be it. I'm on FM radio right now. The volume's working. Mine worked before, but that is how you'd perform an update like that. Now I'm really hoping that this system software update allows us to fully customize this unit to make it exactly what we want it to be and not have it revert to previous settings. Only time will tell. And I just wanted to show you how you could do these updates yourself if you weren't quite sure how. Now let's pull the beast outside and see how many GPS satellites we can track. CarPlay doing its thing. Oh, this time's taking a little longer. Oh, it just came up. That one took a little longer than the other times we tested. Anyway, let's look at the GPS signal. Ooh, right away. Well, I would definitely say that it works because the only GPS antenna I have connected right now is the shark fin up top here. So I think we're good there. Okay, I wanna try CarPlay once more from a fresh start. Maybe because I went right into reverse, it was delayed. 
let's do a start again here. My phone's right there. Sorry about the glare from the sun. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I hate to say it, it's taking longer than I would like. Just to be sure, I'm going to check I have the latest software version installed like we're supposed to. Well, according to the screenshot from Facebook, I do have the latest software version. And I do have the latest Canvas version. So I have all the latest software, but CarPlay is not resolved. I think I figured something out. I have a feeling that when they're testing CarPlay, they're testing it just on the bench. Because if I just turn on the accessory, watch how fast CarPlay connects. It's in. Now if I get out, close the door, lock it, basically reset the system, get in, start the vehicle. I think the connection is going to take a lot longer. Yeah, I think that's the problem. I think they need to test it with a vehicle running an actual test vehicle and not just on the bench. And once we get this figured out with the vehicle, with the engine running and have CarPlay connect faster and consistently, then that will be the fix. I'm not an engineer, I really don't know, but this is just my assumption because every time the vehicle is just in accessory mode, we connect right away with the update. When the vehicle is running, it's inconsistent or very slow to connect. But again, if you're not reliant on CarPlay, then this doesn't matter. You can do a lot of the things that CarPlay has, pretty much everything, and not need CarPlay at all because of the functionality that this screen has. But that's up to each user and your preferences. But look, it still hasn't connected since I've been talking. Let's do a comparison with the factory system and see how quickly CarPlay connects. Because it's exactly the same in my Corvette. Phone's in my pocket, starter up. waiting for CarPlay to turn on. CarPlay. So definitely quicker. Well, I'd say it is what it is. Now you know how to do a GPS antenna tap and you know how to do some software updates. Now I need to put Mrs. Dawn's life vehicle back in the garage so she doesn't get mad at me. So I think that brings us to the end of today's video. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Please consider subscribing and we'll talk to you next time.